Good Wednesday morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for this Wednesday, June 27th. Uh, lots of issues impact-wise, primarily gusty winds, low humidity. Coming in off the Sierra Front in western Nevada today in a broader swath across southern Nevada, much of the southern half of Utah where fuels are extremely dry today. Uh, that activity shifts eastwards and stays in uh, southern Nevada and uh, southern and eastern Utah and still affecting parts of eastern Utah as we get into Friday. So a three-day period of strong winds uh, up north, up in uh, western Wyoming and in the mountains of central Idaho, cool, moist conditions, maybe even some scattered showers. Over the last 24 hours, not much in the way of precipitation, no lightning in our area. Current fire activity uh, in the red is the latest fire activity. Existing fires or recent fires in the yellow. And precipitation, a dry period, just a couple of hundredths, maybe a tenth or a quarter inch up in northern areas, otherwise bone dry across the region uh, for the week, near 0% of precipitation across a good portion of the area. A look at the ERCs, and they are climbing. A lot more purple on the map across uh, southeastern Utah, and uh, these dark reds indicate 90th to 97th percentile, so we can see most of Utah and into the southern half of Nevada critical, and even these yellows up here in northern Nevada, when combined with the heavier carryover fuels from last year, providing critical, critical conditions when we do have wind. And also getting up into southern Idaho. We notice even some isolated drier pockets near the 90th percentile or above in the southwest Utah. Some live fuel moisture that have recently come in. We look in the sagebrush into uh, the Uinta Basin. You can see that we are new record levels over here and not too far south of Provo uh, down at record levels with, with our, with our uh, finer fuels. So things have dried out considerably. And we've been under high pressure, lots of heat the last couple of days, but this trough of low pressure and these tighter height lines will be picking up the winds across western Nevada and eventually across the entire area over the next couple of days, but also in the far north bringing some cooler conditions and maybe some moisture. So for today, we see that trough of low pressure and the drier air. Uh, this will be picking up the southwest winds, and you will, we have high risk for winds and low humidity for western Nevada and a good portion of uh, southern Nevada and Utah through here. And these winds, these wind speeds, uh, dark purples here, gusts of 45 miles per hour off the Sierra front. Dark greens to oranges indicate winds of 25 to 35 miles per hour further east. Look at these humidities, single digits uh, south of the Idaho border and even into the mid-teens up north. That trough deepens. We are in the dry pocket, noticing uh, the orange to brown colors here. That's dry air mass. So low humidities at the surface. Here are the high risk for winds and humidity. Humidity across Utah down between 4 and 7% in those affected areas, similar across Nevada as well. A lot more purple on the map here, so a lot more gusts approaching 45 miles per hour across the southern two-thirds of Utah, and even some stronger winds up here into the Snake Valley of Idaho. Trough deepens further on Friday, still affecting eastern Utah down into the Arizona Strip with winds and low humidity. Those humidity levels still in the single digits near 10%. Still seeing those winds here in the orange and purple shades gusting to 35 to even 40 miles per hour. No significant precipitation for us, maybe just a light scattering up in the central mountains of Idaho. We dry out on Saturday, drier west-northwest flow, uh, not significant enough for any high risk. Our dryness levels on the right-hand side, there's some monsoonal moisture here pushing into uh, New Mexico, but staying to our south and east, that monsoonal moisture stays there. We're breezy during this time period, but nothing unusual. Another low-pressure area dropping down into parts of uh, southern Canada, which could bring increasing winds later in the period. So I'll have to watch this period as we go into uh, the middle of next week for increasing winds. No high risk as of yet. Seven-day precipitation totals dry across the entire area, just some light amounts up north. Monsoon stays well to the south. Extended outlook, 8 to 14 day through July 4th to the 10th, above normal temperatures, especially the eastern half. Some monsoon moisture creeping up maybe into southeastern Utah, otherwise dry elsewhere. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.